a million living creatures. Dropped into one of the driest places on Earth, no rain, no natural water source nearby, just sand, rock, and temperatures that swing from freezing nights to scorching days. Most scientists would call this ecological suicide. But Israel didn't ask for permission. They built a river where none existed, filled it with a million fish, and walked away. What happened next is forcing the world to rethink what's possible in a climate-damaged future. The Negev Desert covers more than half of Israel's territory. For decades, it's been a symbol of survival against impossible odds. But in late 2024, engineers and ecologists did something that sounds more like science fiction than science fact. They released roughly one million fish into a newly restored desert river that hadn't supported a living ecosystem in generations. This wasn't a publicity stunt. It was a calculated ecological experiment with implications far beyond Israel's borders. The fish weren't just surviving, they were thriving, reproducing, and building a full ecosystem in a place where water itself is a luxury. If you're fascinated by massive engineering projects and the technologies shaping our future, subscribe to Next Blueprint, hit the like button, and comment below where you think this is heading. Before any fish touched water, Israel had to solve a more fundamental problem. How do you create a river in the desert? The answer wasn't simple. It required years of planning, geological surveys, and engineering that blended modern technology with ancient water management principles. The target was a section of Desert Valley in the Negev that once held seasonal water flows but had been dry for decades. Climate change, water diversion, and human activity had turned the area into a lifeless channel of cracked earth. Engineers didn't try to fight the desert, they worked with it. Using a combination of desalinated water, treated wastewater, and carefully managed underground aquifers, they began feeding water back into the ancient riverbed. But water alone doesn't create an ecosystem. The team spent months preparing the environment, adjusting water flow rates, testing temperature stability, and introducing early vegetation along the banks. Automated monitoring stations were installed to track dissolved oxygen levels, nutrient loads, and flow rates in real time. Only when the data confirmed environmental stability did they approve the next phase, the fish. Releasing a million fish wasn't reckless, it was strategic. The species were chosen after months of testing. Tilapia made up a significant portion because they're resilient, adaptable, and capable of surviving sudden temperature swings that are common in desert climates. Carp and small native desert species were also included, each filling different ecological roles. The goal wasn't just to see if fish could survive, it was to jumpstart an entire ecosystem. Fish accelerate ecological recovery in ways that plants and microorganisms alone cannot. They oxygenate water through movement, distribute nutrients through waste, control insect populations, and create habitats for smaller organisms. Introducing such a large number at once was a gamble, but a calculated one grounded in ecological science. Too few fish and the ecosystem stays fragile, too many and you risk oxygen depletion and collapse. The day of the release felt like a quiet milestone. Trucks carrying oxygenated tanks moved slowly into the desert valley. There were no cameras, no crowds, just scientists carefully transferring fish into water that had been lifeless for years. If this kind of bold ecological engineering surprises you, hit the like button. Within weeks, early reports started coming back. The fish weren't just alive. They were exploring different sections of the river, settling into slow-moving areas, and showing signs of normal behavior. Surveys conducted by Israel's Nature and Parks Authority in late 2024 showed survival rates surpassing 75%, far higher than initial projections. Follow-up checks in early 2025 confirmed the trend. The fish were not only surviving, but beginning to reproduce. That last part caught everyone off guard. Reproduction wasn't expected for at least a year. It takes time for fish to acclimate, establish territories, and find suitable conditions for spawning. But the Desert River provided something unexpected. 
geothermal activity below the surface kept water temperatures stable even during cold desert nights. This created microenvironments where fish could thrive year-round. The early reproduction was a critical turning point. It meant the ecosystem wasn't just surviving on external support, it was becoming self-sustaining. But reproduction also introduced new risks. Overpopulation is one of the biggest dangers in young ecosystems. If fish multiply too quickly, oxygen levels can drop, especially during heat waves. To prevent this, monitoring stations track conditions around the clock, sending real-time data back to research teams. If oxygen levels fall or nutrient loads spike, adjustments can be made before the system crashes. What makes this project remarkable isn't just the fish, it's the water system keeping them alive. Israel has spent decades perfecting water recycling and desalination technology out of necessity. Desalination plants along the Mediterranean coast now provide roughly 40% of the country's fresh water. Wastewater recycling returns an additional 660 million cubic meters annually, covering about half of the nation's agricultural needs. This freed up enough resources to experiment with desert river restoration. But the real breakthrough came from underground. At depths of 15 to 30 meters, scientists found ancient fossil water heated naturally by geothermal energy to around 40 degrees Celsius. This water is slightly brackish, unsuitable for drinking, but perfect for aquaculture and ecosystem development. By tapping into these underground reserves and blending them with treated surface water, engineers created a stable flow that mimics natural river conditions. The system operates in a closed loop. Water entering the river is monitored for salinity, temperature, and oxygen content. As it moves downstream, Vegetation along the banks absorbs excess nutrients. Fish waste enriches the water with nitrogen and phosphorus, which feeds plant growth. When the water reaches the end of the restored section, it's filtered, reoxygenated, and cycled back. It's not a perfect natural river, but it functions like one. Comment below if you think this technology could work in other deserts around the world. Despite early success, the project is far from secure. Desert ecosystems are notoriously unstable. A single heat wave, a drop in water flow, or an invasive species introduction could trigger a collapse. This is why monitoring never stops. Automated sensors provide continuous data, but human oversight remains critical. Teams conduct regular field surveys to check fish health, observe behavioral changes, and track population dynamics. One concern that keeps researchers awake at night is disease. In controlled aquaculture systems, disease outbreaks are managed with antibiotics or isolation protocols. But in an open ecosystem, those tools are limited. If a pathogen enters the river and spreads unchecked, it could wipe out the entire population in weeks. To reduce this risk, the fish species were carefully selected for natural disease resistance. Regular health screenings help catch problems early, but there's no guarantee. Another challenge is predation. As the ecosystem matures, predators will arrive. Birds, reptiles, and mammals are already being spotted near the river. In a healthy ecosystem, predation is natural and beneficial. It keeps fish populations in check and prevents overpopulation. But if predator numbers grow too quickly before the fish population stabilizes, the balance could tip. Researchers are watching closely, ready to intervene if necessary. But intervention comes with its own risks. Too much human interference and the ecosystem never develops natural resilience. Israel didn't build this desert river for national pride. They built it as a proof of concept. Climate change is making water scarcity a global crisis. Rivers are drying up across the Middle East, Africa, Asia, and even parts of Europe and North America. Traditional solutions, building dams, diverting water, drilling deeper wells, are reaching their limits. What Israel demonstrated in the Negev is a different approach. Instead of extracting more water, use what's available smarter. Recycle, desalinate, and engineer ecosystems that can thrive on minimal resources. Reports documenting the project's early results are already being compiled. 
Israel intends to share methods, data, and monitoring techniques with researchers worldwide. The goal isn't just to show what worked in the Negev, it's to offer a potential blueprint for other countries facing drought and desertification. Jordan, Egypt, Morocco, and several Gulf states have already expressed interest in similar projects. But replicating this elsewhere won't be easy. Each desert has unique geology, water chemistry, and climate conditions. What worked in Israel might need significant adaptation in Algeria or Arizona. Still, the principles remain the same. Understand your water sources. Engineer for stability, not volume. Choose species that fit the environment. Monitor constantly. And accept that failure is possible. Israel's desert river is succeeding right now. But five years from now, it might look completely different. Ecosystems evolve. The question is whether human engineering can guide that evolution without breaking it. 20 years from now, this project could be remembered in two very different ways. It could be the moment humanity proved we can reverse ecological damage even in the harshest environments. A turning point where deserts stopped expanding and started healing. Or it could be a cautionary tale about the limits of human intervention, a reminder that nature doesn't always follow our blueprints. The truth is, we don't know yet. The fish are thriving today, but ecosystems operate on timescales far longer than human patients. What we do know is this, water scarcity isn't going away. Deserts are growing, rivers are disappearing, and the old solutions aren't enough anymore. Israel's million fish in the desert represent something bigger than one experiment in one country. They represent a fundamental shift in how we think about climate adaptation. Not fighting nature, but redesigning our relationship with it. Not hoping for more rain, but engineering systems that work with what we have. If this project succeeds long term, it won't just change Israel. It will change how every drought-stricken nation approaches water, food security, and ecosystem management. And if it fails, the lessons learned will still be invaluable, because the next country that tries will know exactly what not to do. Either way, a million fish swimming through a desert are teaching us something we desperately need to learn. That survival in a hotter, drier world won't come from doing things the old way. It will come from doing things we've never tried before. If you want more stories about the technologies shaping our future, subscribe to Next Blueprint, like the video, and share your thoughts in the comments.